Deadly subway attacks over the weekend, coupled with the increase in gun violence on the streets, painting a bleak picture of New York. But based on the most recent numbers released by the NYPD, overall crime is actually down. I'm going to throw a lot of numbers at you right here. Take a look. Murders down 7.4%. Assaults down 76 Rapes are down. Robberies are down. There are the numbers right there. Overall crime down 21% from last year. Now, shooting incidents, let's talk about them. They are up 16.7% compared to last year. And according to the NYPD, gun arrests have jumped 61.5%. Here are some insight on these numbers and what the department is doing to address them is Police Commissioner Dermot Shea. Welcome back, Commissioner. Thanks for being here. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. So, Commissioner, I, I want to begin with what's going on in the subways, right, in the subway attacks. 21-year-old yep. Rigoberto Lopez due back in court again on Friday, charged, for those who don't know, with murder and attempted murder in four separate attacks. Now, the NYPD added 500 more cops right away to the subways, but the MTA asking for 1,000 more. Can you make that happen? Well, what we committed to, and we thought it was important to, to put the public at ease, Dan, um, we announced the 500 officers on Saturday. It's the days of running together, but I think that was Saturday. Mm -hmm. We think that's the appropriate number right now. Of course, we'll continue to evaluate as we move forward. It's that balance, Dan. It's the city is not the subway system. It's the entire city and the resources and the, the crime picture. Um, I would I would push back on you a little bit with the bleak. You know, there's a lot of good things going on, too. So We'll, we'll continue to fight and get through this. And uh, right now, uh, 500 is the number. Uh, understood. You know, MTA interim president Sarah Feinberg was here on our air the other day. She, says she has a very good working relationship with you and the department. But she says she yeah. did ask for help 30 times in the past year before these additional resources of 500 police officers made its way into the systems. What was preventing that call from being answered? Yeah, many, many conversations uh, with, with Sarah Feinberg, good partner, you know, works closely with Eddie De La Torre and now Kathy O'Reilly. Um, same, same answer, really, Dan, where, where we're constantly evaluating the crime picture, the ridership, what's going on. Um, and, and we will continue to be flexible through our ComStat system where our resources need to be. Um, I'll, I'll point out, Dan, again, I, I know this is water under the bridge, but... Mm -hmm. You know, with this most recent incident, we've encountered this individual multiple times, multiple. So it's, I, you know, we could throw resources at a problem and, and put, you know, whatever the number of officers into the system is. Um, there are other issues at play that need to be fixed. We can't arrest people over and over and over again. Just doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's where we need the help. And so you're, you're mentioning that help. And do you believe then that the growing mental health crisis, homelessness, may be contributing to a rise? And is the NYPD equipped to handle that problem in the system or do you need help? Well, I, of course we need help. It's all systems working together is where the answer is. I think you mentioned two of the three. The other is the crime picture. When, when there's just good old fashioned crime and people are held accountable for it, not always jail, but sometimes, Pat, I just mentioned uh, this morning an individual that uh, six arrests, like within the last roughly year, and keeps assaulting people. One of them was in transit. But how many times does somebody have to be beaten up before they go to jail? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the question. I mean, it, New Yorkers should not be guinea pigs and, and being victimized and traumatized over and over and over again. So whether it's mental health, homeless, or, or good old fashioned crime. We just need, uh, you know, some consequences here. Yeah. Um, or, and some good outcomes. So it's not necessarily that you, you might want to put like a police officer on every platform and every station because that might not make a difference. I think it's unrealistic. I honestly, I do think it's unrealistic to expect that. Um, it's a very large transit system. When you look at the crime overall, we finished last year down. Obviously, yeah. you have to put a big asterisk next to that. But those, those numbers are still continuing. I mean, the, the crime levels are down. Um, there is that perception. Anytime there's a terrible incident like this, we blast it out everywhere, Dan. And people see that, and, and it affects how people uh, feel. Yeah, and we're, looking at, and we're looking at the numbers right now on the screen. You know, when I want to talk about gun arrests, and this is a conversation I feel like we have every single time you're here, but it's so important to keep talking about it. Gun arrests have increased 61.5%, nearly 500 gun arrests last month, with the Bronx and Brooklyn leading the way. Eight guns, eight seized from a party bus in Brooklyn on yeah. Friday night. Any idea, because you can keep making the arrests, but any idea where the guns are coming from? 
Well, we know where the guns are coming from. They come through the iron pipeline primarily. They come from down south. It's, very, it's a couple hours drive, Dan, and there's a, uh, you know, the consequences aren't necessarily there. We work closely and do those types of cases, but I'll flip it around, Dan. A party bus with 40 people. We had kids, I believe, as young as 14 years of age on that bus. You know, we need everyone getting involved here. You're putting your kids on a bus with eight firearms. And number one, the COVID. I guess mm -hmm. COVID doesn't apply to party buses, so yeah. that's another angle here. But eight guns um, and, 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 you know, some other things going on on that bus and drugs and things of that nature. I mean, people need to say, like, that, that doesn't sound like a birthday party to me, and we need everyone to be accountable, um, you know, talking to their kids when they're leaving their house. Yeah. I mean, th there were some young kids on that bus. Any chance you, you would bring back the plainclothes unit that was disbanded to help in the fight? Dan, I mean, uh, your numbers were outdated there when you showed the gun arrests. Now, as of today, I think they're up 70% over last year. Making gun arrests is not the problem right now, and it hasn't been for the greater part of a year. Um, people getting arrested with guns and walking right out of the courtroom with no accountability is the answer. So unless I'm putting people in plain clothes sitting on benches mm -hmm. and deciding trials, that's where I need them. Uh, I wanna talk to you real quick about this NYPD sergeant under an internal investigation after she was seen taunting protesters at a Black Lives Matter rally in Brooklyn, wearing this Trump Punisher logo on her uniform. It's one of the first cases after the new discipline matrix was agreed upon. Any information you can share with us about the investigation and has the officer been reassigned? Yeah, so that, that case will eventually come to me, Dan. Uh, I find that, um, you know, uh, I'm biting my tongue here with what I find that, that there is an active investigation. Um, the discipline process has already begun. We anticipate she will uh, be destined for the trial room in the NYPD for charges and specifications. Uh, that, that behavior in terms of modifying the uniform, mm -hmm. completely unacceptable, and you've heard me say many times, police officers need to uh, be apolitical yeah. as they're out there. Their uniforms need to be uniform. It's in the definition. And in terms of the trust um, you know, that we seek so much, from the public, I think that does a lot to damage it. Uh, understood, sir. And you know, I, I do want to get to this because it has been a difficult year for the department and the city, right? Aside from the pandemic, aside from the protests, recruiting, recruiting is actually down. So what is the NYPD doing to get the force back to some of those pre-COVID numbers? I understand you have a couple of events this week as well. We do, we're gonna be pushing it heavily, the recruitment. Um, June right now is the date that we expect the next police officer exam to take place. We'll be advertising that heavily as soon as it's pushed out by DCAS. Um, come the beginning of March, you're gonna see us really aggressively um, advertising throughout New York City, and we're calling on all New Yorkers. This is your opportunity to join the greatest police department in the world and be a part of that change that turns the city around. So it's an exciting time. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from us throughout the next month or so, and it's a great opportunity. So uh, if you know anyone that's interested, mm -hmm. Please advise them. June is the test, and that filing is going to be opening up, we believe, in April. Understood. And it's a short window, Dan, so we really need everyone getting on board. Yeah, and there's some of the information right there on the on the recruitment event this Thursday with Chief Juanita Holmes, who's the chief of patrol. We're going to have the information on our website, too. Commissioner Shea, I know you said you bit your tongue in one of those answers. You never have to bite your tongue here, all right? Always a good conversation with you. Yeah, I know that. You. All right, Commissioner, <laughs> thanks, thanks for Dan. being here. You're welcome back. Thank you.